chat with Carl about the new parts, and we're happy that they've been integrated into the car, okay? With any luck, you'll be able to feel the improvement, so give them a try. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my F1 2019 career mode for the Hungarian Grand Prix today, also known as the Magyar Nyagidij. I will never say that again because I probably butchered that pronunciation. My uh, Hungarian it is not very good. But uh, anyway, we have some upgrades for our Formula 1 car this weekend. It's a, a weight redistribution upgrade, so it might not be the biggest uh, difference, but hopefully it will still help us uh, navigate the many corners around this uh, circuit. There it is, weight redistribution. So uh, yeah, hopefully that will help us. Uh, get a bit more time out of the car and uh, bring us a bit closer to uh, the top teams which will uh, be very fast around this circuit it is uh, it's a type of circuit where you really you really need a good car to, to be competitive uh, otherwise yeah, you don't really have much chance it's uh, very uh, dependent on the aero and chassis and uh, our chassis is it's improving but uh, it's still not really there yet so anyway, let's get into practice. Welcome to Hungary, where practice is just about to take place at the Hungaro Ring. This track is extremely narrow, making it one of the tougher circuits to navigate. So practice session like today's, 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 so practice session like today's are pretty much essential. Beside me to take you through free practice today is a man with three decades of racing experience under his belt. It is, of course, Anthony Davidson. Thanks for joining us today, Anton. Tell me, where should we be focusing our attention today? I think we need to be looking across the entire field to see how far these cars are able to push a single set of tires. While everyone will be trying different setups and running with different fuel loads, if you're attentive enough, you can definitely pick out trends for each type of tyre compound, which will give us a rough idea of how long the drivers are able to stay out there during a stint in the race. So there wasn't really too much to cover uh, from practice. You can see here doing the uh, track acclimatisation, which uh, was relatively easy uh, as ever but uh, I do still think it's uh, quite a pointless program because uh, if you need to learn uh, the how to take the corners so you can just turn the driving line on for a few laps but uh, anyway we can uh, not worry about that and uh, cross the line get that done that's fantastic you obviously have a really good understanding of this circuit and uh, you get a bunch of resource points from it anyway so uh, can't complain it's time to remind ourselves of our top three, who are The Scientist, Hamilton and Charles Leclerc. And that so uh, I actually did the uh, qualifying simulation, so uh, that's why we uh, managed to top practice one. But uh, even so, that means we still have uh, some pace. But uh, anyway, as we go on to practice three, and uh, a practice session where we did race runs, uh, we're nowhere. So uh, this could be uh, quite a long weekend, but Sergio Perez uh, is right up near the top uh, on that list. And uh, I set my time on the soft tyres, the fastest compound, and uh, really I'm nowhere near him. And uh, he's up with uh, the top teams already, so I don't know. I've, I'm clearly lacking a lot of pace to my teammate uh, at this point, but let's get into qualifying and uh, hopefully we'll uh, find some more time. We hope you're looking forward to today's qualifying in Hungary as much as we are. We think it's going to be a cracker. I want to talk briefly about the strategy in these qualifying sessions. Anthony Davidson, how can a driver adjust their approach to gain those critical extra tenths of a second? Well, qualifying isn't about adjusting your approach necessarily. It's more about trying to repeat a low fuel run that you've practiced prior to this session. You're looking for perfection on the lap, and that's hard to achieve if you're trying something new. There are some variables that can stand in your way, however. 
track position or unexpected yellow flags, for example. Coupled with ever-changing track conditions, it's important to be out there at the right moment. But as a driver, you have to try and ignore these distractions and just keep your mind focused on that one perfect lap. You should be able to get into the next qualifying session easily, so try to get a hot lap in early so we can save the tyres. Well, you would think so, but this is Hungary, and uh, certainly not my favourite track on the calendar. So uh, we go on two lap in Q1, and hopefully we do get into Q2. That would be embarrassing if we uh, didn't even make it that far. Obviously, uh, a while ago in uh, Silverstone, we didn't uh, it make it into Q3 and uh, only qualified uh, 14th and we were uh, off the pace in the rain so uh, hopefully that is uh, not the case this time it's not raining but uh, we are off the pace but uh, anyway through the uh, first half of the lap getting through fairly well missed the uh, first apex of the chicane there but uh, as we move on to the final corner out of the final corner DRS open towards the line Fantastic. That was the fastest lap. and uh, we get the fastest lap so far which is always a good sign, but uh, as we go on to the end of the session, we drop all the way down to 14th, but uh, thankfully uh, we do get through to the next session with uh, Alex Albon, Kevin Magnussen, Kimi Raikkonen, Antonio Giovinazzi and Danny Gaffiat knocked out in Q1. Let's get into Q2. 30 seconds left in the session. Thanks Jeff. So, 30 seconds left and we have not set a time in Q2 yet, so uh, we are doing that now into Turn 1 and we uh, get through there. Uh, fairly cleanly, so uh, we should, in theory, be able to uh, make it into Q3 fairly easily. Our car has uh, pretty decent pace, it's the fifth fastest uh, on paper, so we've got no excuses. And uh, running a little bit wide there, but uh, we should get away with that. Through turn four, now very tricky, running wide there again, bouncing off the kerb. And uh, that threw the car uh, just about off the road, but got away with that. Sometimes you can get a, a track limits warning there, but uh, we just about got away with a big cut through the chicane there and, you know, again very lucky to uh, get away with uh, not getting a track limits warning through there as well but uh, running wide through the final corner and across the line and a uh, bit of a messy lap but uh, we go P5 so uh, we have found some pace maybe uh, a little bit too much pace but uh, anyway we'll potentially turn the difficulty up but uh, I'm not too keen on that because I know that is uh, that's just uh, a one-off good lap. My consistency around this track uh, is not there, unlike in uh, Austria and Silverstone, where uh, I really uh, enjoy those tracks and can push quite a lot. Uh, Hungary, I, it's just not really a track I enjoy too much, and uh, the consistency for me uh, in terms of just uh, putting in solid lap after solid lap just isn't there for me. And uh, yeah, so anyway, Robert Kubica, uh, Daniel Ricciardo, Devin Butler, George Russell, and uh, Lando Norris knocked out. It's off the bottom of the screen, but I can uh, confirm that uh, in this session. Let's get into Q3. So, first lap in Q3, and we are going to do two. We've saved two sets of tyres, and uh, this is one of the circuits where uh, I would favour qualifying uh, over saving some tyres for the race, especially. Uh, the way the soft tyres are uh, in this race, you're probably not going to use the second set anyway. So uh, let's just uh, qualify as high up the grid uh, as we can. So through the first uh, sector pretty cleanly, missed the apex of turn 4 and that'll uh, cost us some time. But uh, through turn 5 fairly well there and uh, managed to stay on the line more or less. The uh, chicane big cut through in the second half again and uh, that's just the line that I'm taking through there now and then uh, running wide in uh, the middle sector in uh, just about every single corner and just not really being on the racing line at all through there and uh, that will definitely cost some time and we'll be able to make that up uh, if we go for another attempt but uh, you can just see literally just running deep into every single corner and uh, I think that might be the uh, front tires overheating or something because the car just is not turning in and uh, it's happening on uh, every single corner and of course uh, when that happens you start losing time you drive more aggressively it just gets worse so we are going to go again in this session 
and uh, try to improve on that because we are currently uh, in tenth. We're tenth in the speed trap, 304.5 kilometers per hour. And uh, we are in tenth, and we have an objective to be in top four. I highly doubt we'll get that, but uh, I want to be as close to uh, the front as possible because it's a race. Anyway, to the second lap in uh, the session now and we uh, get through first corner pretty cleanly second corner uh, is nice as well and uh, you can see in the top right we are already green bit of a cut through turn three but uh, that's fine we get away with that and uh, through the uh, turn four much nicer that time and uh, we are purple to the first sector how has that happened I do not know but uh, we are purple so uh, that is uh, a really nice uh, improvement and uh, we get our time for the second sector we are green and uh, now into the third sector let's uh, just try to keep it on the road unlike uh, what we did last time bit of an awkward line through the second last corner but through the final corner we're going to get that just about right get the power down nicely a little bit wide on the exit but we're going to cross the line it's another green sector Good work. and we qualify in p4 With qualifying finished, it's time to remind ourselves of our top three. Hulkenberg, Bottas and Lewis Hamilton. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. I cannot believe it. P4 in Hungary. How how on earth has that happened? Um, ridiculous. Sergio Perez way down in P10. And uh, Pierre Gasly down P9 behind uh, Lucas Weber as well. But most notably on that screen, which I've completely glossed over so far, Nico Hulkenberg in the Haas on pole position. What on earth has happened in this qualifying session? Uh, to have that, there must have been some uh, crazy uh, track evolution right at the end. And uh, obviously myself and Hulkenberg uh, maybe got the best of that. I don't know. Insane. Absolutely insane. Um, no idea. What? i got no words for that. Ridiculous. Uh, anyway well done that was a good qualifying performance let's get into f2 we're just 18 kilometers from the city of budapest here in hungary where today's formula 2 race is about to start hold on to your hats this should be something special The Hungara Ring is located 12 miles northeast of the capital, Budapest. It's 2.7 miles long, featuring 14 corners, and it's got a reputation for making overtaking difficult. Nevertheless, there's a history of some truly exceptional races here. Let's hope that our Formula 2 drivers can serve up some more of that today. Davide, is there anything we should be looking for in today's race? The teams are all very competitive at the moment, so are we about to witness a push from anyone in particular? Hi, Alex. The team will have been studying everyone else out there very carefully. So I think we are in for a very interesting event today. I can't wait to see how this race unfolds. Here are the starting positions for today's race. A fantastic effort from Lando Norris yesterday puts him on pole position. And starting alongside in P2 is Alexander Albon. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Giotta, Roberto Meri, and Fuoco, Galeo, Makino, Delatrat, Nick De Vries, Sete Camera, Fukuzumi, Artem Markalov, and Latifi, Aitkin, Gunter, Boccalacci, and Arjun Maney. Kari and Alessio Lorandi completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out. So let's go down to the track. You should have some space going into the first corner, so try to keep it tidy. Thanks, Jeff. All right, let's get underway. Five red lights. And away we go for the feature race here in Hungary, bit of wheel spin from uh, the cars up ahead, but uh, we get away okay, not the greatest start, but uh, better than we have been, and uh, Fuoco is already through on the right hand side there, and I think there might have been another car there as well, as we go down uh, the outside of everyone into the first corner, Makino is through on the inside, and uh, we're trying to hold around the outside of Fuoco uh, on the exit heading towards turn two, 
and we go down the inside of Woko and Makino and uh, immediately uh, take back those positions and uh, now hopefully we can focus on George Russell uh, up ahead and uh, our championship rivals of uh, Norris and Albon but uh, we can't make a move on George Russell uh, anytime on the first lap and by the time we finish the first lap he has uh, really pulled away and uh, he uh, lacking some pace uh, in this race so uh, I'm gonna hope that uh, that was just uh, cold tires and uh, it might seem that way as we move on and we've caught up to George Russell and uh, we get past him round the outside into turn four and uh, you don't get away with that every day so maybe he's got an issue he was going uh, quite slow just there so uh, maybe uh, some kind of issue uh, for George Russell, I'm not sure, but uh, we made a really nice move just there. But uh, anyway, we now move on uh, a ridiculous number of laps onto uh, lap 13, and nothing has happened in that entire time, was just circulating on my own. And uh, it's now time to come in to the pits. Our tyres are very, very worn, nearing on uh, puncture territory on the front. So we're going to come in, get some fresh tyres on the car and hope that uh, we've got some more pace on these exit, exit uh, to chase down the leaders because uh, on uh, those uh, softer compound tyres uh, we weren't gaining anything uh, on the cars in front really so I just yeah I have to hope that uh, on these harder compounds uh, we'll be faster uh, as we typically as we typically have been in the past but uh, as we move on now to uh, the end of that lap and we'll see where we slot in. We did get uh, a bit of an undercut on the cars around us. So uh, let's see, we pass uh, all the cars in pit lane and we are up into P4. And uh, the next car up ahead is my teammate Luca Giotto, who is uh, currently on the podium. So uh, really no nice race for Giotto. He hasn't had uh, a very good season so far. A lot of unlucky DNFs. But uh, anyway, this is, uh, speaking of unlucky DNFs, Nick DeFries and uh, he is out of the race on lap 17 with uh, a mechanical failure uh, to his car and uh, he will find a safe place to pull over and uh, we did get a VSC from that but uh, we got underway quite quickly and back uh, up to racing speeds and uh, now we are right behind Luki Giotto and we go down the inside into turn 5 and uh, made quite heavy contact there but uh, now we move on to the end of the race because that was literally the last thing that happened in this race. We weave across the line into the wall okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. for uh, a podium uh, in this race, but uh, I can't be too happy about it because it was boring. Carlin have pulled off a sublime performance to secure the top step of the podium today. Tell me, Davide, what was the key to this success? Although the Formula 2 car are all the same spec, the winner just looked better out there. It would have been a combination of getting those tires up to running temperature faster and driving to the condition on track. They made it look easy out there today. And there you have it, today's winners. Having raised some of the biggest names in F1 to date, Carlin have once again shown their expertise when it comes to recruiting new talent. No doubt today's winners have a bright future ahead of them. They certainly deserve it after today's performance. So Lando takes the win from uh, Alex Albon and myself. So uh, the three uh, championship rivals uh, on the podium, Lando Norris trying to uh, get back into the fight after uh, losing a lot of points recently. But, uh, yeah. To say how boring that race was, I've been recording for... So then, it's time oh. to see how this result affects the Drivers' Challenge. It's a good result for Alexander Albon, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? Look at where Nerey Fukuzumi finished compared to where he started. That's a really strong performance. So driver of the day has to go to him, I think. And here's how things are shaping up in the team's championship. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. Goodbye for now then, but we really are just getting started. Make sure you join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. Okay, what I was saying, I've been recording for five minutes since uh, the start of this race so yeah, really uh, not a lot happening in that and uh, yeah only a couple of minutes of footage worth showing uh, from I don't even know however many laps that was a lot of laps uh, in that one 
So uh, a very, very uh, long and boring race that. But uh, hopefully the sprint race uh, will be more exciting. We'll be uh, starting uh, in amongst the pack down in uh, P6, I believe, with uh, Norris and Albon behind us. So uh, that one should be uh, a lot closer uh, and a lot more exciting because, yeah, race for me then was uh, very boring and uh, not all that enjoyable. But uh, let's not be too negative. We got a podium in the end and uh, we had uh, quite a nice race in terms of uh, making up from where we started. We're returning after yesterday's feature race for the final event of the weekend. The sprint down on the grid below us. The drivers are spending their last few minutes getting ready. Very soon, they're going to kick this race off in dramatic fashion. Davide, is there anything we should be looking for in today's race? The teams are all very competitive at the moment. Alright, thank you for that, Jeff, as we go to five red lights. And the lights are out and we are underway for the sprint race here in Hungary. I almost said this feature race. Albon straight past on the left-hand side. A good start also by Della Trazis trying to make a uh, dive down the inside of everyone into the first corner. We go very deep into the first corner, almost running into the back of Sean Galeo. But uh, thankfully we are uh, able to stop the car before uh, we're running into the back of him. But uh, he is side by side with uh, Antonio Fuoco and we're going to go around the outside of Fuoco. Can we get there? We're sort of half there and uh, we're going to be on the inside for the next right hander. Send it down the inside almost into the back of Galeo again but uh, we get that position. Now we move on trying to overtake Galeo into the first corner. It'll be a big dive but we go for it down the inside of Sean Galeo and uh, we get that move done uh, on lap three uh, of this race. That didn't have DRS by the way. But uh, Galeo actually got the better exit, and uh, we don't quite get it done. Down the inside of turn two, though, and uh, Galeo uh, has a lock up, and we get the move done there ahead of uh, Sean Galeo. Next up is uh, Sergio Sede Camera. But uh, Great That's a new fastest lap for the race. as we said, a fastest lap, he's got other ideas. He's round the outside of Louis Delatraz into turn one. We're trying to uh, get a switch back and get a nice run on both of them but uh, we were a little bit too far back for uh, that to mean anything and uh, they're still battling side by side up ahead so uh, we're just going to have to try to stick to our line and see if we can uh, find an opportunity and uh, that'll arise as we go around the outside of uh, Louis Dallatraz but uh, unfortunately okay, you need to give that position back. That was an illegal overtake. we gave up the spot so yeah Bit of a, it was a nice move, but uh, you have to keep it on the road if you want to keep the position down the inside. Now into turn four, but uh, couldn't quite uh, hold it there. And uh, we're trying to hold it around the outside now of turn five, but again, just can't hold it. So we move on, and uh, Della Traz and Fukuzumi are battling away now. And uh, Sede Camera's caught in the way. We go around the outside of Fukuzumi. He has a massive lock up, so we try to switch it back to the inside. We saw that coming, but. Uh, they, we just couldn't uh, make that work and we get a terrible exit out of turn one so uh, unfortunately uh, there's no opportunity there we send it around the outside of turn two but again just uh, that was never going to work and uh, to be honest that was probably more just missing the breaking point rain in 15 minutes okay so uh, that's something I didn't even look at was the weather but uh, anyway we send it down the inside of Fukuzumi into turn five and uh, we get that done very aggressive there on Fukuzumi but uh, knowing that the rain's coming uh, we need to get a move on because uh, overtaking in the rain is uh, a very difficult thing to do so we go to the inside of uh, the next car there de Latraz but uh, just can't quite get there and uh, that uh, turn 4 overtake uh, is never uh, going to happen but we go down the inside into the chicane very aggressive there on Delatraz, but uh, like I said, we need to go aggressive now because uh, we just we need to get these moves done uh, before the rain sets in. Here's the replay of that that overtake, and you can see uh, how aggressive we're being through uh, that section of track compared to uh, the cars behind. 
but uh, eventually it is time to come in for the intermediate tyres, slicks off, enters on, or uh, wet tyres rather, the uh, Formula 2 uh, cars don't have a, an intermediate level tyre, just uh, slicks or wets, so uh, wet tyres on in fact, and uh, away we go out of pit lane, and uh, hopefully we can uh, still have some decent pace uh, in this phase of the race, I don't really know uh, how that will go. But uh, we've actually boxed uh, a lap earlier than uh, most of the cars around us. So that could potentially play into our hands. We'll have to see uh, how that goes. But uh, we could have uh, just pulled a masterstroke as a uh, set a camera who uh, we go on board with is uh, the race leader of uh, the cars still on slick tyres. And uh, if you just heard at the start of this uh, shot, he had a lot of wheel spin there. So we move on towards uh, the end of that lap and uh, into the last sector for us and uh, our tyres are coming up nicely to temperature and they're handling quite well uh, in these conditions much better than uh, the slick tyres uh, I would imagine a bit of a slide there but uh, they, it's wet conditions so uh, you come to expect that if you put a bit too much power down but uh, here is set a camera now tyres on and out of pit lane and uh, here he comes uh, through pit exit and back onto the track and uh, he maintains uh, the race lead and here are we here, is that English? here we are uh, going through turn one and he is uh, way ahead of us uh, at this point so we're going to need to set some good laps if uh, we want any chance of uh, catching up to set a camera but uh, as we say all of that lap 24 and Jack Aitken uh, is out of the race and uh, now we move on to the final lap of the race and we have a bit of a 360 through the second last corner okay, the gap behind is seconds. and uh, once again I have to say this has been uh, a little bit of a boring race the next car behind 18 seconds back and we couldn't catch Sede Camera so here comes Sede Camera across the line to win the sprint race here in Hungary well played Sergio Sete Camera and uh, here we come drifting around the final corner and uh, we are going to take P2 in the sprint race in Hungary. Double podium for the weekend so uh, not a bad round. Carlin have pulled off a sublime performance to secure the top step of the podium today. And Davide Valsecchi, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? I think this race was won thanks to the tyre management. You have to remember, it's not just about going as fast as you can. It's about consistency. It's about maintaining your speed over an entire race distance. So being able to keep the lap time competitive while still respecting the tyres, that's where they won today. As we can see, it's time for the podium, and I can see the Carlin team underneath our commentary box going crazy as their driver walks out. It was a great win, and it means a great deal to this team. So Sergio Sete Camera takes the race win there, and uh, myself, P2, Louis Delatraz gets uh, on the podium once again. So uh, nice work uh, for him. But just a boring weekend. After this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. It was not the best weekend for our championship leader, and their advantage at the top has been reduced. And now, Davide Valsecchi, let me ask you, who is your driver of the day? My driver of the day was Nicolas Latifi. He did a cracking job of moving through the field, just showing why he's so highly rated. And here's how things are shaping up in the team's championship. We saw a dip in form from the championship leaders today, their lead has taken a significant blow. And after all that excitement, I think it's time for a lie down. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you when Formula 2 returns. All right, thank you, uh, Alex. Almost forgot your name there. So uh, it's a double podium. I can't complain too much. I don't uh, want to complain too much. But uh, yeah, bit of a dud of a weekend. Just two races with uh, not a lot of action. A couple of mechanical failures and uh, not too many overtakes. We 
We've seen some astonishing Grand Prix here over the years, haven't we? The drama of 2015 is a recent example. Jensen Button's first win on a wet track in 2006, or in 1997, Damon Hill's heartbreak in the Arrows after a late gearbox failure cost him what would have been the team's only ever victory. What a wonderful place this is to come racing today. Located 12 miles northeast of the Hungarian capital Budapest, the 14 corners of the Hungaro Ring are steeped in history and prestige. Overtaking has always been difficult on this technical 2.7 mile circuit, but the last few years in particular have turned up some exceptional races. Let's hope we're in for another one here today. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Let me ask you about the new Racing Point driver. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Great work from Nico Hülkenberg yesterday sees him start on pole. And it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have... Hamilton, the scientist, Sebastian Vettel and Verstappen, Leclerc, Weber, Gasly and Sergio Perez. Ricardo, Butler, George Russell and Norris, Albon, Magnussen, Kimi Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi. Fiat and Robert Kubica takes the last spot on the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. starting position for us let's see if we can improve on that in the race thanks Jeff I do think that uh, it's a good starting position I don't think we can improve on it during the race that would be to get a podium and uh, I think that's uh, off the cards at this point we definitely out qualified uh, the pace of the car keep an eye on the lights the start sequence will begin as soon as the grid has formed be ready with the clutch all right thanks Jeff we now go to one two three four and five red lights and away we go for the Hungarian Grand Prix and uh, it's an okay start, Sebastian Vettel is already side by side, he got a brilliant start and uh, he's challenging uh, the Mercedes cars into the first corner, Bottas locks up uh, on the inside there but uh, gets away with it and uh, Nico Hülkenberg is uh, managing so far to hold off the two Mercedes cars through uh, the opening uh, first sector of this race and uh, we almost uh, send the car off the road there. I'm not really sure what that was. Verstappen's around the outside, but uh, he makes a mistake, runs wide, and uh, comes back on, almost hits Charles Leclerc. Let's uh, have another look. We were wide and almost off the track, and uh, side by side with Verstappen, and uh, we'll, we both ran wide there, and uh, here's the onboard from Leclerc, and uh, Verstappen was off the road, and uh, comes back on, almost hits Leclerc, but uh, they just about uh, get away with that, I think. But uh, as we slide through turn five, we are uh, going to be going backwards uh, in this race. We've got very fast cars uh, right behind us. And yeah, I really, I don't see a way we can uh, try to challenge uh, the Ferraris and Mercedes. But uh, who knows, if Hülkenberg holds them all up, we, you know, we might just be able to stay in touch. But we'll see. Uh, it'll be very difficult for uh, Hülkenberg up in the lead to hold off those Mercedes cars for long. But uh, I, I'm really hoping you can, because uh, that will help out. That will help everyone's races. It'll help me. It'll help the Ferraris, and uh, it will. Uh, yeah, it'll help him as well. So uh, I'm just hoping that uh, he can hold them up for uh, as long as possible. But uh, they have a lot of straight line speed, and it'll be very difficult for him. So uh, that said, Lewis Hamilton down the inside of Nico Hülkenberg into turn one, and uh, he'll probably just take that position. But Hülkenberg. Uh, he's holding on on the outside and he's on the inside for turn two and uh, Hamilton locks up and uh, in an uncharacteristic mistake uh, loses out to Nico Hülkenberg and uh, sits uh, back in P2 Valtteri Bottas now putting the pressure on Lewis Hamilton so uh, Nico Hülkenberg doing a brilliant job to come back at Hamilton there and uh, thanks to uh, yeah an uncharacteristic mistake for Hamilton Nico Hülkenberg maintains the lead of this race uh, for another lap there's no real overtaking to do uh, between there uh, and uh, the end of the lap so uh, he can uh, just relax now and uh, try to uh, focus uh, on getting the best run possible uh, onto the main straight and hope that uh, the Mercedes cars are too far back 
but uh, as we move on, you can see uh, the battling away up ahead once again. But uh, the focus now is on Charles Leclerc down my inside, and uh, we just cannot fight the Ferraris. They are way too quick in a straight line uh, and through the corners. But uh, here we go. Lewis Hamilton battling away with Nico Hulkenberg once again. But uh, actually, no. Uh, Hulkenberg able to hold on once again. So uh, there you go. Nico Hulkenberg maintains the lead for another lap in this race. But uh, we move on to the main straight once again. And uh, we are being uh, overtaken again uh, down the inside. This time it's one of the Red Bull cars of Pierre Gasly. And uh, he takes that position away from us. And uh, we're going to try to buy it back, but we're just not close enough into the next corner. And uh, we just get a bunch of understeer uh, for our efforts. But uh, I believe at this point on uh, this lap, uh, Nico Hockenberg uh, was overtaken by Lewis Hamilton. And uh, we are now under pressure from uh, Verstappen behind. So, yeah, we need to we need to get a rhythm in this race because... We're just dropping back further and further as Verstappen goes down the inside into the chicane. Very rare to see the AI try to make moves in a, a corner like that. But uh, that is how much pace we are uh, just missing uh, in this race. So uh, as we move on, we run wide. Had a, a wheel in the grass there and uh, made a bit of a mistake. And uh, Lucas Labor's down the inside. We give him a squeeze to the inside there. He, he, uh, we made a bit of contact, sends us off the road. Hopefully we didn't uh, damage his car uh, in doing that. But uh, he tried to make a move, but uh, had a bit of an overlap. And uh, we didn't leave any space on the inside for him to take. But uh, thankfully, I think we both uh, just about got away with that. But uh, it doesn't matter. He goes down the inside into the first corner anyway. And uh, Sergio Perez goes with him. So it was actually three wide there. And I didn't even realize that at the time, so lucky I didn't turn in too hard uh, into that corner. And Sergio Perez gets two for one and uh, moves up into P7. Uh, eight in this race, sorry. But uh, yeah, we are coming back at Lucas Weber, but just cannot uh, send it down the inside into turn four. Just uh, not an option. That would have ended in, in a crash for both of us. So... We need to uh, we need to find some pace in this race because we're just going backwards and uh, the team will not be too happy uh, if we uh, don't even get points after starting fourth. But Lando Norris through on the inside and uh, we are now out of the points after starting uh, in fourth position. We have dropped like a stone and with. I've just got nothing to fight with. The car just, it's not responding to, you know, the turning, the braking. It just, it just feels like a slower car than uh, what I had in qualifying. It's just, uh, it's just not the same for whatever reason. Whether it's the track conditions, the tire temperatures, I'm not sure. But uh, something has uh, drastically changed. And all of a sudden, we've gone from uh, fighting for uh, a really good, a really good result. To uh, dropping uh, all the way out of the points so uh, hopefully when we get the new tyres on we'll be coming into the pit soon anyway just hopefully that will uh, solve our issues otherwise you know, we could be in for uh, a long afternoon now Ricardo uh, is right behind us and uh, he is going to try to make a move into the first corner down the inside and Ricardo takes the position and we have dropped back uh, into 12th position yeah, but uh, finally it is our time uh, to make a pit stop in this race so hopefully we can uh, find some pace on the medium tyres because we have had a disaster of a race so far so into the pits we come and uh, hopefully we can uh, get through uh, cleanly it doesn't look like uh, anyone else is pitting uh, this early in the race as we uh, just get it stopped for uh, the pit line and uh, into the pits we go and hopefully we can get a good stop. The Racing Point team, not the fastest uh, in pit lane, I've discovered over uh, go, go, go. Uh, another uh, video I'm planning at some point. Uh, driving a Williams car, they can do like 1.8 second pit stops. Let's get some heat into those tires. But uh, unfortunately, Racing Point seem to be limited to uh, over two seconds, it seems. So uh, yeah, quite slow pit stops for uh, the Racing Point team. But uh, that is reflective. Our gap to the car in front is 5.1 seconds. 
uh, of real life as we uh, pass a bunch of cars uh, in pit lane and uh, move up into P13 but uh, hopefully uh, there are more to come uh, on the next lap so uh, we'll find out as uh, Albon uh, is out of the race but uh, we move on past pit lane again and we gain some more positions the undercut uh, working for us there and uh, we are up into P10 in this race Jeff, I just said that. All right, so we move on once again, and uh, there is a battle going on up ahead between uh, Nico Hulkenberg and uh, my teammate Sergio Perez, and uh, Perez uh, got the better of that one, and uh, Hulkenberg dropping uh, a long way from uh, his pole position down to uh, ninth place uh, at the moment, and uh, it might soon be 10th. Can we make a move uh, towards turn 4? This will be aggressive if we can do it. We're gaining and gaining, but uh, there's nowhere for us to go. But we're right behind him and uh, almost running into the back of him there. But uh, unfortunately, uh, no roof to be made there. So we have to move on to uh, the straight with the DRS. And uh, he gets a decent exit. We're going to sit in the slipstream. Hopefully we can make a move into the first corner. He defends. We go to the outside, down the outside of Hockenberg, around the outside and uh, that make that move stick uh, on Nico Hockenberg. Uh, next up is Sergio Perez, but uh, he's gotten away a little bit in uh, the little battle we had with Hockenberg and uh, getting stuck behind him for a while. But uh, the next car uh, we catch up to is actually not Sergio Perez, it's actually Lucas Weber. So uh, we go down the inside of him into the first corner, get squeezed a bit and uh, had to back out of that. He didn't want to leave any space on the inside there uh, as we did to him. So uh, we have to go for another attempt on another lap down the inside and uh, we this time get the roof done uh, on Lucas Weber and uh, next up now uh, is Sergio Perez and uh, Verstappen has an issue and on that topic Sergio Perez down the inside of Verstappen uh, with his issues in this race and uh, Sergio Perez uh, now up into uh, about 6th position in this race so uh, he is absolutely flying and uh, the Racing Point cars uh, for both of us have uh, come alive on the medium tyres uh, as we move on and go down the inside of Verstappen on uh, I believe the very next lap so uh, yeah Verstappen really losing a lot of pace because Sergio Perez is quite a way ahead of me still and that car behind uh, is Charles Leclerc and uh, I'm not going to battle with him too much as we go wide uh, through that corner and just let him go it'll be uh, easier for both of us if we can uh, just both go on with our own races so uh, let him pass there and uh, he'll be able to push on and uh, make the most of his own race and uh, we don't need to hold him up so let's uh, get back on track focus on uh, getting some good laps in and catching up to Perez So uh, our pit window opens 7 laps, so uh, we just need to make those laps count, make them as fast as possible, because uh, Sergio Perez, as you uh, may have noticed, has uh, actually taken a pit stop now. He went from softs to softs to mediums, uh, not soft to two sets of mediums, uh, the way I did, and uh, now he's on the medium tyres, as you saw just there, coming out of pit lane uh, was Sergio Perez. So uh, we're on alternate strategies and he's going to get the undercut uh, on us, but we will have fresh tyres uh, at the end. So uh, eventually it's time for us to come in for our pit stop and uh, the final one off the day running a little bit wide, just missing uh, the wall there uh, on the way into pits. But uh, we do get a stop just about for the uh, marks there and uh, into the box we come. Hopefully we can get a good stop. 2.24 seconds that seems to be about the ceiling or floor whatever you want to call it for uh, the racing point team no uh, they are certainly not capable of uh, a sub two second pit stop uh, even with all the efficiencies on uh, like I have so uh, or I, I think I do I'm not sure but uh, anyway we've uh, dropped back after the pit stops. some cars ahead of us still uh, need to make their stops so uh, we'll need to, to deal with them and uh, that could have an effect on our race. And uh, speaking of which, we have uh, caught up to George Russell who was uh, just battling away with Max Verstappen uh, uh, just earlier. So uh, 
a difficult race for Verstappen when uh, he has to battle away with uh, the Williams cars uh, on the same lap. So uh, yeah, we uh, give Russell a little push there uh, as we were uh, on our way past and uh, make our way past uh, George Russell. Now we are up into uh, P7. So uh, we've uh, managed to recover quite well in this race on the, the medium tire stints and uh, they are working very, very well for us. So, yeah, this race has uh, sort of come back for us and uh, eventually we catch up to Sergio Perez and we get a run towards turn four. The AI, AI seems to be quite slow on that straight. We go around the outside of turn four and uh, I would take that any day of the week and uh, we get past our teammate. Here's a replay and uh, this was a nice move around the outside and uh, Sergio Perez uh, not able to put up much of a fight there. In fact, he uh, backed out uh, on the inside to uh, make sure we didn't uh, come into uh, any collisions there. So uh, next up uh, ahead of us is Pierre Gasly and uh, he is uh, way off into the distance but uh, who knows, if we push on hard enough we may just be able to catch him. The, the car has really, the, the medium tires have made that much difference to the car that uh, We've gone from uh, dropping like a stone to uh, potentially uh, gaining time uh, on the Red Bull cars. So uh, with Verstappen uh, also uh, having issues in this race, it is uh, actually a really good opportunity for me to ask Reduce all the Red Bulls. So now we move on to the final lap, we could not catch Pierre Gasly, we got close, we were gaining almost a second lap but he must have turned his engine up because uh, the gap sort of just stabilised after a bit so uh, good job by Pierre Gasly able to uh, hold on uh, from us in this one. So uh, yeah, 1.6 seconds ahead. But uh, anyway, we come across the line to finish P6. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. Don't, don't worry about that. The Mercedes team pulled out a fantastic performance today. They should be proud. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races. And we saw that today with our winner. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. So Lewis Hamilton takes the race win and uh, it is yet another Mercedes 1-2, Sebastian Vettel P3, so uh, good efforts uh, from him uh, throughout this race, able to beat the Red Bulls and his teammate. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Now, let's discuss, Ants. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? It's a tough one, but I think I have to give it to Robert Kubica. He really impressed me out there today, and I think he has every right to be happy with that result. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes moved to the top of the table. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. All right, I will be sure to join for the next round. So, uh, yeah, pretty decent race in the end. We hold on to uh, our position in the championship thanks to uh, a bad race for Verstappen. Gasly uh, beats us, but he's been uh, kind of nowhere in the championship fight so far. And uh, really, he should have been miles up the road from us, uh, up with the Ferraris and Mercedes. I'm not sure what he was doing. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. Do you think your rival learned from his battle with you? Yeah, I think we've both been uh, pushing each other quite hard. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, we've both been learning a lot about uh, this year's car and getting them more and more out of it each round. You had a close battle today, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Uh, definitely the start on uh, the soft tyres, he had a lot of pace, but uh, we managed to get him in the end. 
think you were lucky not to end your race with that? Appreciate your time. Thanks, Claire. So, end of uh, another race weekend. And, uh, yeah. We uh, managed to bring out uh, another decent result. Didn't look good at the start, but, uh, yeah, can't complain. It was uh, another solid race. But uh, I just want to quickly point out, uh, I've never noticed those uh, pit boards that uh, the teams hang over the wall with, uh, I think, the times uh, between all the cars. But uh, I'm pretty sure they're actually uh, accurate. One of them, uh, the two that you could see on screen uh, at the end of the race just there was uh, the Renault ones, and one of them had uh, Devin Butler up ahead. And uh, Devin Butler was uh, one position ahead of uh, Magnussen, I believe. So uh, that's actually quite cool to see that uh, uh, they're there and they work. I've never noticed those before so for some reason. That's a great result. You did really well. I don't think we can have any complaints with that performance. But uh, contract uh, negotiation time. And we are just going to see what we can get away with as usual. I think we can pretty much just get whatever we want. Okay, that proposal looks good. It seems all parties are happy with the deal, so it'll commence at the next race weekend. And uh, they accept that contract. So, let's uh, have a look at R&D. What do we got next? We've got uh, Spa and uh, Monza coming up. So, uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to work on the chassis side. That tire wear upgrade I did consider, but uh, I think in the end... Uh, I went for uh, two drag reduction upgrades, those two miners on uh, the left and right side there are uh, drag reduction uh, upgrades. So I'm going to go with those and uh, they will go in the car for uh, Spa and that should help us uh, along those long straights uh, at the Spa circuit and uh, Monza uh, after that. So uh, they will be on the car for then. And uh, I will see you for the round in Spa in Belgium. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Goodbye. This sounds crazy and fast forward.